Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it, and I'd be able to deliver watches like this to your inbox every day. If you like our watches, this one included, you can see them and purchase them on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing what might be the most interesting Patek Philippe Nautilus of the 2000s. With all due respect to the 3710, the 3612, and the 5711J in yellow gold, this Nautilus midsize 5801A is the one that intrigues me the most, and it is the one that I would most like to own. Now, there's been a midsize Nautilus in the range since 1981, but this model was announced as part of the 2006 30th anniversary celebrations and 30th anniversary model line, but consensus is that it wasn't built that year. Rather, it was a single year of production spanning two model years from roughly 2007 to 2008 with the watch discontinued by 2009 making this an exceptionally rare watch with a narrow production window and on the wrist you can tell it has the unmistakable stance panache and full concept integration of bracelet case bezel and lugs that you expect from a Nautilus. It even has the blue gradient dial. So let's talk a little bit about how it fits on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. First and foremost, most people aren't going to know this is the midsize. It wears like any Nautilus, which is to say a bit bigger than its nominal measurements. I measure it at 35 millimeters if you're going to actually put calipers on it from about 10 to 4 o'clock. If you measure it across the case, it's broader, more like about 42 millimeters in that case. You'll also find that if you were to measure its thickness, it's nice and slim at 8 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, if you measure the intermediate link that joins the bracelet to the case, you find 42 millimeters is the span across the wrist. A jumbo might not wear on a smaller wrist, whereas the 5800 has none of those problems, and I recommend this Nautilus for wrists as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. It is super slim. Yes, it is thinner than a 5711. It's also the original Nautilus monoblock case, so in many ways, this one is actually closer to Gerald Genta's original patent than the 5711 itself. This has more in common with the 3700 that came before. Now, you can see the bracelet bezel, dial, lugs, and case are all in proportion. It's been very cleverly sized down. Scaled is the word. The bracelet is beautifully made. As you can see, the hairline bevel continues from the lugs to the flanks of the links, intermediate links with polish, primary links with satin finish. You'll also note that the sizable links, the removable links here, are actually removed and refit using screws, not the cheaper pins and sleeves that took over the Nautilus round about 2012. The 5800 never lived to see that downgrade. It features the characteristic double folding Patek Philippe clasp, all of high polish inside, with a clamshell Calatrava cross closure. Close it, it's low in profile, physically secure, and nicely made. Now open it back up, and you can see that the case back itself is Something other than expected. Yes, it's a monoblock case, which is to say the top and the bottom elements pressed together and bound at the wings. But the sapphire has been fit directly into the case rather than the screwed in case back. You're looking at the sapphire fit directly. We'll talk about this more in a moment. Let's talk about the case and the dial. As you can see, the 2006 blue gradient is well represented here. That was part of the entire family of watches. The chronograph, the Moon Phase Power Reserve and the 5711 that debuted in 2006. This one has that feature about its dial, and you can see it changes from a sort of argent silver blue to almost navy or black at its outer periphery. The case is a Nautilus, combination of creases and curves, satin and polish, beautifully composed, hand finished in its entirety. This is a good looking watch. Let's get a little closer, keep everything in focus, get, allow ourselves a bit more light. Now you can really see the reflective character of that dial, as well as the way that the light dances across it. Of course, the hands, baton style, are 
made of white gold, as is the Lancet Seconds Hand. The indices themselves are white gold, and this is a Luminova dial, so there will be a loom shot at the end. The watch retains its 120 meter water resistance due to the monoblock case construction, though it does not have a screw down crown. Nevertheless, it remains a full service sports watch. Quick set function for the date, no hacking function for the Seconds Hand, but that's old hat Patek Philippe. Also old hat Patek Philippe is the Caliber 330. Now, this is a movement that still features the Geneva Hallmark blazon on its train bridge. You can see the old school signature, the imprimatur of the highest standard of finish and verification in fine watchmaking, commissioned by the city and canton of Genève. You'll also note that the balance beats weight a slightly slower cadence than the 5711's 324. This is a 3 hertz, so 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate. You have a wonderful panoply of finishes, beautiful mirrored anglage in every jewel countersink as well as the edge of each bridge, and you can see that gleaming. Let me see if I can turn flush to the camera and show you. There you can see the edge of the bridge's light up, mirror finished and rounded by hand. You'll also note perfectly aligned linear Cote de Genève across the bridges, black polished screw heads with chamfered slots, as well as circular Cote de Genève across the winding mass and a micro perlage at the center of the rotor. There is also a larger scale perlage beneath the balance itself. Automatic winding with a 48 hour power reserve and again, water resistant down to 120 meters. This is your full service mid-size Patek Philippe sports watch. In many ways, this watch is overlooked rarely made, rarely seen, and somewhat unknown. I have to say that this is one of the undiscovered investment grade Patek Philippe watches of the modern era. Folks are beginning to talk about this watch to the point that those who can wear both the 5711 and the 5800 are now saying on the basis of rarity alone, the 5800 is almost the obligatory choice as long as your wrist isn't absolutely titanic. I have to agree. One more shot of this wrist on my six, well, I should say this watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist proves that it looks the part of a Nautilus, nothing less. You can see this one and you can make it yours on our website. And we're back with the Nautilus mid-size 5800, a scarce watch produced for one year, spread over two model years from 2007 to 2008. This is the collectible Patek Philippe Nautilus of the future. See it on the watch box.